For Indians with no home to go to in the capital, this pavement underneath a busy flyover offers very little comfort. The homeless in New Delhi face a daily battle against pollution, traffic, hunger and disease. The threat of coronavirus is one more thing to cope with. Mohammed Rafi says he's received no advice about how to protect himself from the disease. I've been living here for years. No one has told me about the coronavirus. I suffer from breathlessness. Rajesh Gautman helps some of the city's estimated 200,000 rough sleepers. He's running workshops on the importance of hand washing, social distancing and spotting common symptoms of the virus. Initially, people were reluctant to know about the coronavirus, but now they are very much cooperating. Our aim is to prevent its spread. In Europe, activists say the number of homeless people has increased by 70 percent to 700,000 over the last decade, mainly because of austerity measures and high rents. In the French capital Paris, the Emmaus Solidarity Emergency Shelter offers homeless people somewhere safe and warm to stay. But the staff who provide the service fear the spread of coronavirus could mean they have to shut their doors. Ultimately, we need to keep the shelter open for people who are coming out of very difficult conditions, who are weakened by dramatic life experiences. The street is damaging, so obviously we will do everything we can not to put them back onto the street. The United States also faces an enormous challenge. The White House says there are more than half a million rough sleepers. In San Francisco, close to 10,000 people live on the streets, in tent camps, drug rehab centers or shelters. Most will struggle to self-isolate without a home, so city officials have set aside 30 recreational vehicles to be used as temporary housing for homeless people under quarantine. These are recreational vehicles that are intended for people who may have tested positive for COVID-19, do not require hospitalization, but do not have a place to stay. When homeless shelters and food banks are your only option, the idea of society shutting down is unthinkable. But that's the reality facing the most vulnerable, who may struggle to survive this coronavirus crisis. Victoria Gatenby, Al Jazeera. OK, let me try to give you a sense of the scale of the problem. The UN estimates more than 100 million people worldwide have no housing at all, most of them in developing countries. Wealthy nations say the homeless make up less than 1% of their population. But in a country the size of the United States, that's well over half a million people. The worst rate of homelessness among high-income countries is New Zealand at around 1% or more than 40,000 people. Matt Downey is Director of Policy and External Affairs at Crisis. It's a British charity that helps the homeless. He's joining us on Skype from London. Thank you very much indeed for giving us your time. What are the risks, first of all, to homeless people? Well, first of all, it's worth uh, reminding ourselves that people who are homeless are already disadvantaged, not simply because they don't have anywhere to live, but because the average age of death, certainly in the UK, is, is only just 44. Um, and people are three times more likely to have underlying respiratory and other health conditions, which mean that the, the threat from the virus is, is more present um, and more dangerous for that, that population. So uh, it's extremely important that we change our approach to homelessness quickly uh, and save lives for people who otherwise uh, will be left alone. And, and the, the guidance from the UK government and governments around the world, frankly, is, is to self-isolate in your own home. And if you don't have your own home, you can't do that. And also, um, people are asked to keep their hands clean, you know, wash, wash your hands for 20 seconds. And if you don't, if you don't have uh, sanitation available to you, you can't do that either. Uh, so we need a different response and one that instead of leaving people on the streets or in, in quite often overcrowded night shelters, gets people into their own self-contained accommodation as soon as possible. How difficult is that going to be, given the fact that you're also dealing with many people who are, by their nature, suspicious of officialdom and perhaps don't really want to go anywhere near any authorities? Well, our experience of, of working with people who are homeless up and down uh, Great Britain is that the, the vast majority of people desperately want somewhere normal to live. 
uh, some safe uh, accommodation of their own. Um, and actually, we've been working with hotel chains um, to bring online um, hundreds and hopefully thousands of uh, empty hotel beds and hotel rooms so that uh, people who are homeless can take those up. Um, and around the world, and uh, there, are, there's, there are obviously many, many of these places available, and we're, we're pleased that some hotel chains have come forward and offered their accommodation. But also, of course, there's student accommodation, and, and in many cities, there, there is also enough uh, accommodation to go around. So uh, between us, I think when, when national governments get their act together and say, we're going to get everybody in off the streets or out of night shelters, um, we can do something uh, remarkable to save lives because the, the opposite is simply unthinkable. We can't leave people who are already in desperate situations just to fend for themselves in the face of a deadly virus. You said uh, just a moment ago that many p homeless people really do want somewhere to live. So let's say that they go, the process is put in place that you suggest, that people are given somewhere to stay, they're given their own accommodation, but the virus moves on, it, it, there is a vaccine, it is here, the, the situ situation becomes normal again. What happens to the homeless people if they're then told they have to go back on the streets because that accommodation is no longer available to them because the risk isn't there? I think let's, let's uh, perhaps take a step back and, and deal with this in stages because um, whilst it's right to, to ask questions of, of the, the long term in terms of uh, what happens after our emergency response, what's needed first and foremost is that response. Um, we've seen cases here in London of, of night shelters shutting down because of cases of, of people being infected amongst the volunteer base and people being thrown out onto the streets. And, and we can't have this. It's just not, not uh, humane. And I think, you know, we're in a situation where we need to do whatever it takes to save lives. And, you know, here in the UK, we're probably talking about around about 45,000 people who are in hostels, night shelters or on the streets. Um, it's entirely possible for us to find that that number of self-contained accommodation units wherever they come from. And yes, we will then move into a situation where actually we might need a, a plan for every single one of those people to get them into a stable long-term arrangement. But frankly, if it takes the coronavirus for us to provide enough housing and support for people, um, then let's just use that opportunity. Really interesting to get your views on this. Matt Downey of Crisis, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.